Here we are at the uh, NEC in Birmingham. We're here for the cycle show, the biggest bike show in the UK. And uh, we're having a look at the quirkier aspects of the show. We're at the American Pistachio Growers stand and George is going to tell us why they're here. American pistachios are full of power. So we have lots of potassium, fiber. They're really, really good with vitamin B. What we've got is the ideal healthy lifestyle snack recovery product. No added ingredients, no sugars, no unnecessary product in there. So we've been working in the sports market. Um, last year, we sponsored the uh, American water polo team and they won gold at the Olympics. It's down to the pistachios, isn't it? Yeah, it's all down to pistachios, the whole thing. Difficult to shell a pistachio when you're on the bike, though. I uh, not intended for that, no. You, you can buy them without shells, of course, but whilst you're here, part of the fun of eating a pistachio is taking the shell off. So most consumers in this place would have eaten pistachios with the shells on and snap, crackle and pop and had a good time with them. We're at High Visibility um, and Sam is going to tell us a little bit about their bestseller, which is the Polite Jacket. It was originally designed for horse riders. Uh, we thought we'd see how it went in the cycling. It was actually uh, thought about at a horse show. Uh, the director was just writing down notes and she come up with, she was meant to write please but instead wrote polite so we thought we'd give it a go, got some samples in, uh, showed it to a few people, we, they loved it. And what do cyclists make of it? Have you had any feedback from them? Yeah, they love it. Um, a load of cyclists say it's like a force field around them. Um, they say a lot of the traffic won't come past them and they have to sort of like tell the traffic to go. And what do the police make of it? Surely they think that this is like stepping on their territory a little bit. Well, yeah, a lot of people think that, but before we designed it and got samples and stuff, we actually showed them what we wanted to do. Um, we said what, you know, how we would make it not look like police and try and make it a bit more fashionable. But it does. Yeah, it, not really. If you compare it, it's, it's more fashionable, it's more trendy, it's more stylish. Uh, we got some samples in, showed them, and they were like, yeah, go for it. The more you sell, the better it looks for us. Tell us a little bit about the Sunnycam. Well, the Sunnycam, the idea behind it is, is a pair of glasses with a HD video camera built between the eyes so that it records everything that you see. The idea came that we wanted um, a camera that was completely hands-free and mount-free, so initially for sports coaching, um, but actually that's developed now to be used for anything that you need to record with your hands free. It's high definition, it's 720 HD. Um, the actual quality of the footage is really, really good. Where actually, it's, we, we've sold it to a lot of camera companies that, um, that initially were uh, skeptical because they wanted full 1080 uh, HD recording. And then when they actually saw the quality of the video, they were astounded. They couldn't believe that it wasn't 1080 HD. They're on sale now. What sort of price are they at? They're, they retail for 99.99. Um, the reason that they're at that price is we felt it was important for them to be under the 100 pound price point so they're an impulse buy. Bit of a bit of a discount on a pair of Google Glass. Exactly, yeah. Well, that, that's the idea. At the end of the day, people don't have $1,500 necessarily to just buy on a product. We found actually that commuters use them a lot um, to record drivers and things like that. Um, we, uh, we've, we found actually all, all different forms of cycling can, can, can get involved and use them. So we actually have a, um, a pair that's coming out um, next year, um, probably early January, February time, that will be a little bit more cycle specific. I can't talk too much about it. Oh, but it's, go on. <laughs> but it will be much more designed and geared towards cycling uh, as a whole. There's a new lubricant on the UK market. It's called Jizz, and we're here with Andrew Donaldson, who's going to tell us a little bit more about it. Started started working on this about two years ago, and uh, working with different manufacturers, developing products, etc. And then we came out in about May this year with just the cleaner, the the one, the five, and the 25 liter, and then a brake and clutch cleaner, chain lube, and the penetrating fluid. Uh, the name is a bit of a talking point. Um, how did you manage to get that past other people when you were trying to explain, yeah, we're going to call it Jizz? Um, I think realistically it comes down to it's different and uh, different cells and it, it suits the right demographic. It's not going to suit everyone, but that doesn't matter. Okay. What's the biggest amount of Jizz that you've ever sold in one go? Oh, I've sold a good few hundred litres. Standing beside a rather fabulous looking bike, and uh, Nick from Starley is going to tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, well, Hugo Gattini, who was the uh, creator of um, the bicycle, it was a big 10 metre long piece of artwork that was around the bicycles uh, and the Olympics. 
Um, we got in touch with him, sent a, a, a bike frame down to him, which he hand drew for us uh, with a Sharpie pen. Yeah. Uh, and the idea is, you know, a bicycle is art. We have a bespoke nature of our products that you can paint anything you want, design what you want to make your bike. Yeah. Hence, a bicycle is art, using an artist to create a dream bike. Yeah. Um, um, hopefully, we'll be auctioning it off in December. Okay. What's your favourite detail on it? Uh, there's quite a few. You can stare at it for hours, but uh, something around here on the head tomb uh, is particularly nice. <laughs>